Psalm 63. Psalm 63. And I want to look at verse 1 and 2. And then we're going to pick up a few more things in there. But we'll go with Psalm 63 this morning. I'm going to read it from New King James Version. You have it? I say I have it. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. And all the people said amen. Getting thirsty for God. Getting thirsty for God and to see his power and glory in the sanctuary. I want to see his glory in this place. It is not a good feeling to keep coming to church and you have no experience when you come in. But if we become all thirsty at once... Those who hunger and thirst shall be filled. Getting thirsty for God. It is said that the body requires water to maintain an internal temperature, internal temperature and balance of keeping of its cells alive. You need water. Generally, a person can survive about three days without water. We know in the Bible they fasted and they went longer without bread or water. But generally, the body can fast or can go without water. Unless you're spiritually pulled on or summoned by God to go on a long, extended fast, don't do that to yourself. Because the body has to have a constant regulation and movement in it. Certain factors of such things that we, certain factors that we require water. An individual's body has to have it. It's very important. David in the Psalms 42 picks a picture up of a source of living water, refreshing a soul. And he says, as the deer panted for the water, so doeth my soul panted after thee, O God. David's picture here of this deer panting for water. And note the word panting for water. It is not one that's being quiet within an inner desire. But it is an audible sound outwardly. Displaying an urgency of a thirst. That intense desire overwhelming one's senses that becomes heightened as I thirst. The deer knows that if he go to the brook to get water, there are other critters there that could kill him. So the deer is anxious, but yet desiring water. Even though I know that I'm in harm's way, I got to get this water. I have to get a thirst from this brook. Even though I've been here before and I escaped, yet I'm coming back again to get some more water. Look at your neighbor and just say, you're going to get it today. I promise you, you're going to get it. This water is something that the deer panted for. It was a spiritual longing. Getting thirsty for God is a desire. It's a sense of urgency. It's an overwhelming passion and want to have fellowship with him. You can tell when people come to your house for dinner and they ain't hungry. You can tell, even though they came over for dinner, but they ain't hungry because you're cooking chitlins. <laughs> they lose their appetite. But if them chitlins sat there long enough, I don't know, to get off that. You have to be hungry and thirsty to receive, to want more from God. The Psalm 63 opens up and he says, Oh God, my God. He speaks here of the Hebrew word El, 
my God, the strong one. The title here of a worshiper leading into this feeling of worshiping of God. It's an expression here because he's exhausted in a thirsty land. It's sad when you bought everything you could buy, got all that you can amass, and you're still thirsty. There is a thirst within a believer in an individual that only God can satisfy. I thought, I, excuse me, um, he, he, the young man sitting next to you, I don't know you, I don't know you, okay. <laughs> you sure I don't know you? Yes, I do. Your mother used to go to this church. Yes? Still does, okay. Okay, thirsty. <laughs> I'll talk to him afterwards, sir. Longing for God, thirsty for God. David here is in the wilderness. He's running from his son, Absalom, who has decided to overthrow David and take the kingdom. Second Samuel 15 chapter, you'll see the story unfolding as David is leaving the countryside, going up the hillside, coming out of the valley, crossing over Kidron, going into the land of Judah from the land of Judah, I'm sorry. And the people are watching David leave this wonderful place of Judah. David here is now becomes an outcast, but he remembers the sanctuary, remember the presence of God, where the ark of God rested. And the power and the glory of God was seen in the temple, back in the sanctuary, back at the church, if you please. This longing and this creative creating heart desire comes from the spirit you can all be in this room and online and in church but you don't want what the next person next to you want and desire heightens by a person's expression not an expression have to be loud and, and charismatic and excited that helps too but you can tell when a person is seeking God or just seeking to say I did my duty today I went to church. You went to church, but you, did, you came to church, but you didn't go in. A lot of people come in the door, but they don't go in. And when it's over, it's blamed on the worship, it's blamed on the preacher, it's blamed on everything, but you can't blame God. Because if you thirst for me, I'll blow your mind. I, I'll have you not going to leave church if you really get a taste of who I am. Outcast now. He displays, David does, uh, how it was back in the sanctuary. Longing for God. It comes from the spirit. The yearning comes from a deeper place inside of you. Drawing from this well of water, symbolizing the uh, movement of one's desire from a wilderness experience, but I want to go back and draw from that well. In Psalm 63, verse 2 through 5, if you spot it in your, in your reading, the psalmist here is totally involving everything of his being into worship. Verse 2, he says, my eyes, I'm looking for God. Verse 3, he says, my lips are talking to God. Verse 4, he says, my hands will come into this. In verse 5, he says, my soul and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. That's a worshiper right there. It is a blessing when you can come in church and sit next to somebody like that. Because two are gathered in the same place. I'm giving you a hint right now. Don't let that stillness sit on your spirit. Because God has been so good to you that if ice was sitting next to you, you'd melt the ice. But you're not going to cool me off before I turn it up. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. Doesn't matter how you think about it. If you get nervous, I'll shout right now before the preacher preach. Cause I should be dead, but I'm sitting in church. Don't look at me with that saved look. Thirsty for God. The psalmist goes on in verse two, on the verse six, he says, my mind is involved. Shall we repeat? He says, I'm looking, my eyes, my lips in verse three, my hands in verse four, my soul and my mouth in verse five, and in verse six, he says, my mind. 
is meditating on you, Lord. When I remember you on my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. We talked about the watches a few days ago about how prayer watches. He says, now it's the night watch when I should be sleeping, but I'm up seeking God. Not going to the restroom. I don't want any coffee. I don't want any tea. I just can't sleep. So I'm up walking, wondering, is God still in this house? I'm pacing back and forth throughout the house, and I'm looking to run into God. Is any night walkers in here that get up way in the wee hours of the morning? You're not hungry. You just need a little bit more God. Sleep flees from you because I got to get closer to him. I yearn for him. This overwhelming feeling of this song is the confidence of expectation. Say that confidence of expectation. Say it with some authority. Confidence of expectation. While I'm seeking for God in this time of trouble, dry and thirsty land. The biblical heights here of this expression is seen of the joyous believer and knowing that if you seek him, you'll find him. He now worship with the expression of my soul. In verse 1 and verse 5 and verse 8 of Psalm 63, he points out the intensity of his soul. A personal devotion to want to get closer to God. David remembers the past worship services. He sings of God's provisions and how God had done great things in his life. So he longs more for God, even though he's in a wilderness place right now. My soul thirsts for you. My soul is fainting for you. No doubt you could come to where I'm at because I can't get back to where I want to be. This place that I've left from is where I long to be back at, which is the sanctuary. It reminds me of the days of COVID. Yes, when you wanted to be back in church. Longed and talked about the preacher because he shut the church down. Uh, but COVID was real and it killed some people. So we had to do social distancing and all that stuff. Some of you are back from COVID, still social distancing, still got your mental mask on and won't allow yourself to come on into the sanctuary and let it loose. Bump your name and say, we're going to let it loose this morning. We're gonna, don't, don't, I hope they don't get mad at you. We're going to let it loose this morning. We're going to let it loose cleaving and craving for God. I miss that place of worship. I miss that place of expression. I miss the place of the sanctuary. I want to be back in the house of the Lord. I know I want to see God's presence, but I also want to be a part of this corporate worship. Something about being in a place and an atmosphere of worship. It's an expression that's unexplainable because you can't worship unless you got spirit and truth. That's why it's hard for you to worship because you don't have the spirit. If you got the spirit, you can worship. Without it, you cannot. Everybody can praise him, but it takes a spirit to worship him. And that spirit is the Holy Spirit. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. I'm hoping with expectation. My longing to see you. I'm looking for you in the sanctuary, in the place where I used to meet you at. I'm looking for you in verse 2 of Psalm 63 to see you in the sanctuary and not just to come to church and see you, but I want to see your power and glory. Break me free from me. Don't allow this carnal person to stop the power and glory of God to be manifested. Move me out the way and let me decrease that you might increase. If I see you today, then I know what my tomorrow is going to be like. The thing the devil don't want you to do is see a move of God. Once you see a move of God, you can't take it back. And you cannot erase it from your mind. Because God moved on your behalf. It is here he says, my lips will praise you and I will bless you and I will lift up my hands. Psalm 63 and verse 3. My lips shall praise you and I will bless you and I will lift up my hands. The praise in the text is the Shabbat praise. It's a command praise. When you tell your tired self, wake up, you didn't sleep on the job. Wake up, the clothes you got on, God helped you to get them. You tell, wake up, the shoes on your feet, God helped you to buy them. When you command yourself, you're going to praise God before you leave here. You will not sit here like you at a home going and it ain't yours. You're going to open your mouth, lift up your hands and give God praise. I feel anointed here today. 
Oh God, tell your neighbor, you know he deserves it. God deserves more than that. A little patty cake praise. Bills are paid. Car is still going. House still living in. Clothes on your back. Watches and rings and bling and bling. And you're going to sit there like you did it yourself. Open your mouth and give God a praise. Yeah, yeah. Let's work, let's work, let's work, let's work. I need five believers that just bump somebody and say, we got the devil on the ropes this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's Christmas in December. We got the devil on the ropes this morning. This praise in Psalm 63 and 3, this praise is to Shabbat. It is to command, it is to adorn. It is to glorify someone. It is to speak loud, but also to speak quietly. This Shabbat gives a direction to praising and calmness. Shabbat goes on the interior of a person's disturbed spirit or distress and says, I will praise you with my lips and I will praise you with my hands and I will praise you with my mouth. But yet I will praise because of the peace I have on the inside. The joy that you gave me after the storm. The peace that you brought me in the middle of the conflict. You settled all my nerves and all my concerns. And you rested me in a place to say, oh, we going back home. And if you nothing else, the devil cannot erase the sanctuary. I remember what it used to be like. I yearn for this. I yearn for this. With uplifted hands, he says, I will do this. Uplifted hands is a sign of directions of one's prayer pointing to God. Uplifted hands is the focus of the worship that my eyes and attention are all for everything but God. I would that men pray everywhere with their hands lifted up. When you lift up hands to God, it's a sign of surrendering. It's a motion of you deserve the glory, the honor and the praise. If you turn your hands inwardly, so Lord, I receive everything you have for me. But worshipers get what those who think he's not worth can't get. But when you worship him, I'll give you more than what you can imagine. Worship brings him into the place where he said, oh, you want to keep loving on me. You want to keep talking about me. I'll show up in your life and show you who I am if you just know how to worship me. Worship me. Worship me. Getting thirsty for God is a longing for something greater. It's a greater desire. The deer panted after it. Paul pressed for it. He said it's a mark of a prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing will hinder me from getting to more of God. I long for him. I want to go deeper in him. I need him as water. I need him as my necessary life flow. The more I get of him, the stronger I get. The closer I get to him, the more anointed I feel. The more of him, demons back up because they realize it's not just you fighting, it's you and Jesus I'm trying to fight. Him in my life is everything. Thirsty for God. To adorn him. Expression. A strong desire to be confident that I can get what I need when I get to God. Jesus says in John 7 37, on the great day, that day, the eighth day, the great day of the feast, Jesus said, stood and cried, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart or out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I come to tap somebody's well this morning. It's in you. You just got to let it flow. Once you get that water in you, you just don't let the devil stop it up. Don't let the Philistines stop up what God has poured into you. If you tap back into that well, it'll spring up into everlasting life. Pastor House, how do you spring back up? Get your lips moving, girl. Get your hands clapping, man. Open your mouth, young servant and allow God to come on in but don't let anything <laughs> open your mouth and praise God and that well will begin to pry yeah hallelujah 
Dr. Francis and I can understand living on the country and you could not get water unless you went out to that well. And that well was deep, but there was a priming mechanism where you pump this primer and that water start coming up. It took a while to get it up. Oh, y'all city people. It took a while to get it up. But once that water came up, it was so refreshing and cool and just right for the taste. It took a while to get it because it wasn't coming up that fast but after you walk with Jesus for a while you ain't priming no you ain't priming no more baby you just think of the goodness of Jesus and he's done for you your your soul cries out Look at your neighbor and say, oh, you need some help. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm almost done. He says in Isaiah 12 and 3, Therefore with joy you'll draw water from the wells of salvation. Woman was at the well. Jesus says you're going to drink naturally and be thirsty again. But the water that I give you will be in you a well, a fountain, springing up into everlasting life. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty place. I'm looking for you in the sanctuary. I want your power to be glorified and manifested in this place. I want to see your glory fill this place. Not because I'm hollering and talking long, but I'm thirsty for a move of God. I want to see him walk down an aisle that say he can't get down here. I want your feet to go in because he's passing in the candlesticks. Lord, we long for you. I woke up and I began to meditate on who you are. Psalm 63 and verse 6. When I woke up early that night, I was meditating on who you are. How you have helped me. All my life I begin to think about it and I begin to sing for joy wasn't a worshiper in the building it was just me I begin to sing about how you hid me under the shadow of your wings it's clear to me that under your wings is a place of safety you've been protected since January now it's December and the devil still can't get to you God then got you under a wing and keeping you away from danger seen and unseen my soul now is clinging to you God you are the source of my life you are everything to my life you are the life-giving source of my life I want more of you I'm thirsty for more of God I want to see his power manifested that anybody that comes in one way you're going out a different way you're going out blessed and highly favored by God you cannot stop when God begins to move let me show you how powerful it is God brings us together and you're sitting next to a well you're sitting next to a primer you're sitting next to water if they overflow you overflow go on take it down y'all they overflow they everybody get an overflow because the flow is in the building God wants to move in the house but you got to open up and let God move preacher how to open up put your lips in it girl I told you put your hands in it man put your mouth in it open your mouth up and see the manifestation of the power of God Lord shine in this place Lord let your glory walk in this place Lord let your glory be manifested I want to see you in the house where there are rivers of living water flowing, 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 flowing in the name of Jesus. Put your hands up. 
Say today, Lord Jesus, I thank you for flowing and showing your glory in this place. I thank you that I do not have to be dry or empty any longer. You are my source and the source of my life. In the name of Jesus, I open my mouth with hallelujah. I clap my hands with praise the Lord. I shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph because I'm still victorious in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands up, say today, in the name of Jesus, I proclaim healing spiritually, emotionally, financially. I proclaim healing in the name of Jesus over my life, over my family, over my church, over the body of Christ. I decree contracts, lawsuits are turning to my favor. I decree wealth and riches will be in my house in the name of Jesus. I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. I plead a divine Passover in the name of Jesus. I cancel every assignment of the adversary. I cancel every stronghold that's prevailing against me. I cancel and I proclaim victory in the name of Jesus. I cancel, 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 cancel all of that in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Spirit, let the waters flow. Let your glory cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Meet every need and fill every vessel. In the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, sent from above. Feel me till I want some more. Overflow. Only you can satisfy the yearning as the deer pants for you. Pour in the oil. Pour in the grace. In the name of Jesus. I thank you that you met me in my wilderness so I can remember your glory and your power in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Look. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Give me 15 seconds right there. 
your neighbor has no idea how faithful God has been and he just wants somebody that wants him that we yearn and long for him as he yearns and longs for you he is so kind your loving kindness is what David said I remember how you treated me when I didn't treat myself right. But your loving kindness, I remember it. You're faithful. And I'll never take it back. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. For there's joy in his presence hallelujah reach up real high this is the last five seconds and just breathe out Lord I thank you I thank you water when I'm thirsty bread when I'm hungry peace when I need it in the name of Jesus Bless God. Let me hear your best praise in this house. Okay, give you a disclaimer before we leave and ask your neighbor. I hope I didn't bother you too much during service. So all this turn to your neighbor and stuff. If I did, get over it because <laughs> I'm really about to bother you now. <laughs> I'm really about to turn it all the way up. <laughs> <laughs>